I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You are about to hear Night Vision by Dominique Moriso, a MacArthur Genius Fellow whose plays have been produced coast to coast. She's recently written the Tony-nominated book of Broadway's musical Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations. Originally commissioned by the New Black Fest for the Facing Our Truth Project, Night Vision is directed by Story Ayers. Her cast features playing on air regular April Mathis of POA's Goat, Hate Baby, Wanting North, and the Roundabout Theater's acclaimed Tony Stone, and Eden Marichaud of Broadway's Inc. And now, Night Vision. The living room of an apartment in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Somewhere, importantly, is a black hooded sweatshirt. Ayana, pregnant, enters with her husband, Ezra. I cannot fucking believe that. Man was sick. Man wasn't a man. Man was twisted. Unhealthy. I'm still shaking. But sit down, babe. I don't want to sit down. I want to find him and kick his ass. I so want to... Baby, sit down. Are you babe. upset? I'm a lot of things. I- I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm disgusted. I have to pee. I want to find him and kick his ass. You're not going back out there, baby. Then you should go out there. I should go back out there. Maybe. You want me to go back out there and kick his ass? Maybe. What if he has a gun? I don't know. Me neither. It was like, was he punching on her? I couldn't really see, could you? It looked like he was punching on her. But could you see? Not completely. Me neither. I should have kicked his ass. I hesitated. Why'd you hesitate? I just did. I'm calling the police. Yeah. What else can I do? You? Nothing. Me? I I can go find him. No, you're not a fucking vigilante. Didn't you just say you I wasn't serious. You're serious. I don't want you hunting anyone. What if you become the prey? Then call the cops. I'm calling the cops. It's the darkness out there. You get swallowed by it. Goddamn busted street light. Bet half a year they haven't fixed it. Hi, yes, I want to report a situation I just witnessed. A man was beating his girlfriend. She was screaming and he... Yeah, yes, I'm sure he was beating her. I'm sure. And she was screaming and then he took off and ran down the block. Yeah. Yes, okay. He was um he was wearing a hooded sweatshirt. It was covering his face, but I think it was red. Yes. And his pants were dipped low um below his waist. He had on sneakers. He took off running toward Marcy and Green. You could still catch him if you hurry. He was a young black Wait wait, baby. Hold on now. Are you sure? What? He was black. Yes, I'm sure. My memories I'm sure. Are you? Because I'm not. You're not? Yes, I'm still here. Give me a sec. What are you talking about? I thought the sweatshirt was green. It was red. Are you sure? Yes. I'm... Shit, I'm sure. Yes, he ran on foot. We screamed and he ran on foot. My husband yelled, scared him off. She, um, the girl ran to, into a home. Yes, sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, anonymous, please. Yes. No problem. Are you trying to freak me out? I don't remember red. Ezra, are you kidding me? The sweatshirt was... Green, Ayana. It was green. Fuck, was it? That's what I remember seeing. No, that's not right. How could that be right? The street lamp near him wasn't even working. He was in the shadows. I remember red because when he ran, he fell into some headlights for a second. I remember thinking he looked like the devil. The devil? That's what I was thinking. So it had to be red. I remember green. I remember thinking when he fell into that pool of light that he looked pale underneath all that green. Pale? That's what I remember thinking. Could hardly see his face. It was too dark. How'd you know he was black? I, what's happening right now? What do you mean? I called the cops. Was I not supposed to call the cops? No, you can call the cops. You did. You called the cops. So then what's with it? I mean, why are you doubting me? I'm not doubting you, baby. I'm questioning you. Big difference. But what in the... What for? Because you aren't sure. For this, you have to be. It costs too much to be wrong. No, I was sure. I was sure. I felt sure. But you aren't. It's cold in this fucking apartment. 
close the window. It's getting chilly out there. I can't sit still. I'm going to shake myself into oblivion. Sit down. You're upset. You're moving too much. Just sit down. Hypothyroidism. Don't diagnose yourself right now, baby. It's a risk. All my books say so. Not good for the baby. I'm fucking confused now. Stop cussing. That's not good for the baby. I won't stop cussing. Fucking shit. Fuck. The baby knows when I'm thinking it anyway. He might as well get familiar with the fuckery of this world now. You're not helping anything right now, Ayanna. It's not helping. I'm not helping? I tried to help. You told me I was wrong. I didn't. I didn't say you were wrong. I just asked if you were sure. God damn it, Ezra. How am I supposed to be sure? It's dark. It's nighttime. It's supposed to be dark. Now our brother's a hazard if he walks around at night. Should we carry a label? Caution, objects appear darker than they really are. I don't know. Someone was beating a woman. Someone was beating a woman. What am I supposed to do? What if that wasn't his girlfriend? What if he was trying to rape her? What if you hadn't yelled and I hadn't screamed from a distance for him to stop? What if he beat her to death? Should I not have... Should I not try to send the police after him? Should I not have tried to describe him like I remember? Even if your memory is blurred, even if it's clouded with emotion, not for one second did I look at that man and think he was black or even young. He was buried in clothing. I didn't know what race he was. He was a blur of half a man, a colorless half a man. That belongs in jail. That maybe needed some help. Needed some help? Maybe was homeless and insane or on drugs or high. Maybe he was desperate and trying to rob him. Maybe he was a, a kid in trouble, misguided. Maybe, Maybe he was... was some abuser that needed to be locked away. Maybe. I'm going to make some tea. Do you want some tea? No. Are you... Are you upset with me? No. I'm just... No. I thought he was. He looked like the way he was dressed. I didn't even consider that he wasn't until you got me confused. I didn't even consider for a second. And that's the itch right there. What's the itch? That you didn't even consider. There was no possibility of it being another. In your mind, we're the default. How are we your default? Ezra, I'm on your team. You know that, right? You and me, husband and wife, the father of my future son, we're going to have a son. I'm on your side. I'm also one of us. I wouldn't. Ethnocultural empathy. What? In my reading, you're more likely to have empathy for someone who looks like you. Shares your same background. Walked a mile in your shoes. You're concerned about the brother. Concerned that he may be getting a bad rap. I get it. Meanwhile, you haven't said one thing about the woman, even wondered if she was okay. That's what you think of me. That I don't care about her. That I wasn't worried about her getting a life knocked out of her. Why do you think I yelled? Why didn't you chase him? And what should I have done with you? Leave you in the middle of Green Avenue in the dark, pregnant and alone. That's the man you want to have a child with. No. I need to take a walk. You gonna leave? While I'm emotional? No, baby. Not leaving. Just stepping out. Need some air. Come back. Rub your feet. Draw your bath. Okay? You're not gonna... You're not gonna wear that hoodie. It's getting chilly out there. Not tonight. Not tonight. It's all I have. This in a winter coat. I'm supposed to carry that weight now? It's supposed to be my burden to change my attire now? You're going to make me insane. You're going to make me pee on myself from nervousness. You're going to send me into early labor. You're going to make me cuss a lot. I'm just going to take a walk, baby. Come back. Put you to bed. Just want to go make sure everything is okay out there. That's all. You stay here. Rest. Listen, if you're sure, then I trust you. I stand by what you saw.
Oh, God. I'm not sure. You just heard Night Vision by Dominique Moriso, directed by Story Ayers, with April Mathis as Ayana and Eden Marichaud as Ezra. Welcome, everyone. Can I just have you go around the table and say your name? Sure. My name is Story Ayers. I'm the director. I'm April Mathis, and I read Ayana. Eden Marichaud, and I read for Ezra. Thanks. Story Ayers, our director. Mm-hmm. You've collaborated with Dominique Moriso, the playwright of this piece, on many different projects. How did you meet, and what is it about her work that you most love or respond to? I met Dominique when I was a graduate student at Penn State. Our program commissions a playwright to write a play for the third year graduate acting class, and she was my class's commissioned playwright, and she wrote Blood at the Root for us. And through the devising of that piece and traveling uh, the world performing it, we became really close. So when I graduated, she asked me if I wanted to come and work with her, and I worked with her for the next five years as her executive assistant and writing assistant. What I love about working on her work is that, for me, it turns me into an actor, activist. All of her work, for me, does that. It pushes me into this other space of activism, a space that I never thought I would actually be in. I love that about her work, and I love what it stands for and the questions that it brings up. April, your character... Ayana is pregnant. Why do you think Dominique chose to write her as pregnant? And was her choice helpful to you? Super helpful. We had a conversation before we read about what her husband, Ezra, describes as the itch in her thinking about who this perpetrator could have been and that she assumes that he's a young black male who are targets in this country in a lot of ways, and especially in the world of this play that's been set in the wake of the George Zimmerman verdict. And we talked about how it really sets Ayana back on her heels to feel accused by her husband of profiling one of her own. She says, I am one of us, and we're having a son. You are the father of our future son. And Story and I talked about the idea of a black woman's body containing multitudes. And quite literally, there's masculine and feminine in me. Literally, right now, there is a boy Mm. in me, in my body. And there's no remove from that. So it's fecund and potent to set her up that way that is she effectively sentencing some anonymous black man or even her own husband to his death by naming this unknown perpetrator as a young black man putting a target on him. What I love about Dominique's work is how complex she gets in the conversations that we're having with ourselves or maybe not having with ourselves. It's everything for her to be someone who has a young black man's life uh, very much in her care right now. Hmm. In the middle of the play, Ezra says to Ayana, I'm not doubting you, I'm questioning you. Big difference. Eden, did you get a glimpse into Ezra's character right there? I think so. I think that, again, with Dominique's work, it's never really about judgment. It's always like, I'm going to present this case. I'm going to present this case. Let's look at both sides of the argument. It's never Mm -hmm. like this one's right and this one's wrong. And for me, that is a way to affect change. Yeah. April touched on some of this already, but later Ezra says that that's the itch right there, that you didn't even consider there was no possibility of it being another. In your mind, we're the default. How are we the default, your character says. So can you all talk a little bit more about what Ezra 
means when he says, how are we your default? Yeah, for me, that's actually the drone of the entire piece. By drone, I mean like that's where we find what this entire play is about. And I think what Ezra is questioning in his wife I think he's learning something in the moment from this experience, and he's challenging her in a lot of ways to sort of take a look at herself. And I think that's what the piece is doing for a a woman of color specifically. But as a community, it's asking, are these biases that we're experiencing in society only affecting white male police officers, or are they somehow seeping into our subconscious? And how does that show up? Ayana, in that moment, she's connecting to the experience of being black in America, but it's also saying, and with that, in addition to, are you affected by these biases that these white police officers are also? And I think that's what the play is about, asking that question, self-reflection. Which brings us to April's character, Ayana, saying ethnocultural empathy. She's saying the husband, he's identifying with someone who looks like him, which again calls into question, are we or are we not assuming that this is a black man? You Mm -hmm. know, it's what I love about Dominique's work is, like you said, it lays out the questions. So in one way, it absolutely is about are we internalizing bias, but... In another way, it's also questioning gender alliances, and it's questioning, like, well, that being said, should I not have made this phone call? What if there's a guy who happened to be black who was beating his girlfriend and is going to come back after her because nobody did anything to stop him? Mm -hmm. It's messy, and there is no easy answer. You know, the, the most terrifying thing to me is when Ayana asks Ezra to not wear the hoodie. The fact that you can't wear a hoodie because the people who are supposed to protect you might kill you or hurt you badly. That's really interesting. And and it's funny because when I was reading, I was like, oh, of course, of course that makes sense. Like, yeah, you don't want to wear a hoodie. You just call the cops. But then it's like if I investigate my own unconscious conditioning it's like it's really sad that that's not a big deal to me Mm -hmm. it's really sad that i could be apathetic with something like that they're supposed to protect and serve and even if i did beat that woman even if i was the person who did that i shouldn't necessarily have violence on me so if you're going to interrogate somebody or pick somebody up off the street it should be a conversation Mm -hmm. have any of you been in a situation where you realized what you thought you saw might have been inaccurate? I um, I live in uh, East Harlem, and maybe shortly after the 4th of July weekend, there were, like, several rounds of gunshots that were not fireworks, and now we mm. know the difference. And uh, I didn't call, and it turned out that two men were fighting in this housing complex outside of our building and guns were involved and an elderly woman got shot in the crossfire. And, you know, I didn't call and I was thinking about all the times where I did call and I wasn't sure if that was the right decision because I couldn't see anything And I couldn't even tell them exactly which apartment it was coming from. And I said, it sounds like it's coming from this floor. And it sounds like there's a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. But how do I know that they weren't watching a video game? How do I know that they weren't Mm -hmm. responding to an action movie? It's a tricky situation, and I don't know how to handle it. And now there have been more movements to be like, Let not your first move be to call the police about a noise complaint. And I don't do that, but I do hesitate when it sounds like somebody's in trouble, and particularly when it sounds like a woman's in trouble. Tough calls. Well, have I missed any aspects of this play you'd like to talk about? I think there's always something great about how Dominique writes couples and Mm -hmm. how we talk about, like, the good way to fight. There's a point where... It gets not so polite, Mm -hmm. but you never forget that these people know how to communicate with each other and they keep each other 
in check Mm -hmm. and they can be honest with each other and still be completely Mm -hmm. loving and supportive. It happens all in the context of love. You know, you, you see two people fighting and you can tell they love each other because of how strong the need is, Mm -hmm. how honest it gets, how desperate it gets. I want to thank you all for recording Dominique Morisot's play and talking with us today. Director Story Ayers, actors April Mathis and Eden Marichaud. A total pleasure. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. You've been listening to Playing On Air, Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors. Associate producer, Michelle O'Brien. Literary manager, Bonnie Antosh. Literary assistant, Aditya Pratama. Marketing and communications manager, Shelley Horwitz. Theme music, Tom Kochan. Play music, Jimmy Keys. Recording and sound design, John Kilgore. Audio editing, Julia Melfi. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX. Public Radio Exchange. For Playing On Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.